good to be working with you again, Chief. What's it look like? Definitely murder. Where? A block of flats last night. Here in Oxford? Mm. Quite a swanky place. Who? Man, apartment six. Name? Lamb. Octavius Lamb. Married, one son. Huh? Shot. All right, let's get there. Shall I use the siren, sir? He won't run away. Don't call me sir. Upstairs. Yeah. We'll need an incident room on the spot. There's an empty room in there. Office promises telephones by eight o'clock. Let's go up and take a look at Octavius. I like a nice corpse before breakfast. Couldn't you shut the eyes? The doctor put him back as he was, sir. Inspector Havelock, Oxford Central. Detective Chief Superintendent Jameson, C1, New Scotland Yard. That's the estimated time of death. Oh, yes. Yeah. The uh, doctor got to the flat at 11.55. He said death was an hour and a half earlier, assuming he wasn't moved. Take a crane to move him. Uh, so, uh, estimated time of death was uh, 10.30 last night, sir. Don't call me, sir. Where's the family? The wife and son were out for the evening. There was this note. Uh, Having a meal at LF's. Won't be late. Yours is on a tray in the kitchen. M. She likes initials. Who's LF? Working on it, sir. She and the son found him when they got back last night. I packed them off to an hotel. Well, you might as well get him boxed up and out of here. It's half past six on BBC Radio Oxford on 95.2 VHF and 202 metres. What time does Radio Oxford go off the air? Uh, uh, last Good. news, 11.15, about 11.30, Chief. Taking plenty of pictures? They should be back any time now, sir. Don't call me, sir. Tiger. I want to see the doctor. He's not here yet. Ah, well, all right then. The janitor. Then the doctor, then the uh, widow and son. Now, the janitor's name is Lloyd, Fred Lloyd. 
Justamente eso se lo hay. I don't know anything. You're not going to be the judge of that. Don't mind if I use this thing, there won't be evidence. That's my sergeant making notes. His writing is lousy. Let's see. Right, you're Fred Lloyd, janitor of these flats. You live in the building? In the basement. Tell me about the tenant in flat number six. Mr. Lamb. What happened last night? Well, nothing happened to me. Not till Stephen rang down. Stephen? Mr. Lamb's son. Well, was it an ordinary night? What, what time did you finish work? About eight. I watched TV, did some washing. Then the phone went and it was young Stephen. What time was that? Oh, it was late, uh, 11.30, something like that. Can you remember what the boy said? Well, he just got home. Him and his mother, they just got home and Mr. Lamb was dead. So he went up. Mrs. Lamb, are you sure? Is he really? In here, Mr. Lloyd. Are you all right, Mrs. Lamb? Phone the police. I touched the telephone. I mean, there'll, there'll be fingerprints. I, I didn't think. Are you sure? Oh, God. We came in and there he was. Was the front door shut? Yes. I used my key. We came in the front door and in here and... My mother can't sleep here tonight. Well, you must wait for the police. Don't leave me. Could it have been burglars? Well, there's anything missing. Take a look. Mrs. Lamb, you shouldn't be here. The bedrooms look all right. Can't you look inside? Only father knows how. Huh? You have. Huh? Sorry about this, madam. I'm Detective Inspector Havelock, and this is Sergeant Latimer. I'm the janitor. This is Stephen, the son. You OK, lad? Yes, I think and so. Take your mother out and look after her. See where they can stay, Sergeant. Right, sir. What about this? Oh, yes, sir. Some relatives or in a hotel or somewhere like that. The car downstairs, madam. Where is he? Oh, he's in this room here. Shot? Looks like it. Could it be suicide? In the back? No, I don't mind a bit. You're American, Mrs. Lamb? A long time ago. I came over here after college to continue my studies. What was your subject? The Icelandic sagas. And you met and married Mr. Lamb here? Yes. Was he to do with the university? Octavius? Oh, no. Octavius, it's an unusual name. Oh, he was the eighth child and his parents were... No, he was nothing to do with the university. He was in business. And Stephen, how old is Stephen? Nearly 16, sir. Where do you go to school? Radcliffe Road Grammar, sir. As far as you know, your father didn't leave the apartment yesterday evening. Uh, he wouldn't have. He hardly ever went out in the evenings. And you two went uh, to... I went to the cinema. What did you see? A French film, sir. Both of you? Uh, no, Mother went to Professor Friedland. Professor Friedland? Um, they talk Vikings and sagas. It would bore Father. And yet you arrived home at the same time, at 11.30? I still can't believe it. It's... It's all, it's all right, Mother. I called for her after the cinema and we walked home together. Did you see anyone outside? I don't think so. Or in the hall? No. 
It was late for a young lad like you to be out. He was with me. Who could have done it? Do either of you know if Mr. Lamb had any enemies? Octavius? Oh, no, that's the terrible thing. Why do that to him? There are, are enough wicked people in the world, people no one would miss. Why kill him? Mother. <laughs> Yes, well, thank you for coming in. You'll be at the hotel if I still need you. I'd like to go up to the apartment, to my home, to his home. Well, we're working up there, Mrs. Lamb. If you need anything, ask my sergeant. Make sure they go back to the hotel. Sure. Hold a second. Yes, yeah, sir. Two bullets. One in the arm of the chair, one in the wall. Now the third's still in his body. An automatic, that's for sure. Mm. Well, I'll have him looked at. Lamb services? Uh, sort of his business. Uh, temporary typist, secretaries, office cleaners, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Any profit? Yeah, I'd say so. Found any enemies yet? Not even sure I expect it. To all accounts, Octavius Lamb was a saint. Not in yet. Has he got a secretary? Yes, Miss Bennett. All right, I'll see you. Oh, right away for a moment. I'll... Can I help you? Oh, it's about Mr. Lamb. I haven't taken it in yet. Do you mind telling me how you heard? Stephen telephoned me. Mr. Lamb's son. The girl outside doesn't know. No. I haven't told anyone yet, except Mr. Humber. I don't know how to. Mr. Humber? The general manager. How long have you been with Mr. Lamb? Ten years. Ten wonderful years. That's his desk. I can't believe it. Who could have done such a thing? You liked him. I respected him. We all did. Did you ever meet him socially, away from the office? No. Did you ever go to his flat? But there was no reason. Do you know if Mr. Lamb had any enemies? Oh, no. And if you knew him... Tell me. Tell you? What he was like. If you could manage to type those up and get them in the post by lunchtime, I'd be very happy. Oh, would you like them on your personal paper, Mr. Lamb? Yes, please, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Bennett. Good morning, Mr. Lamb. Ah, uh, usual stuff again, I'm afraid, Miss Bennett. My goodness, you are looking smart today. <laughs> do you want to dictate, Mr. Lamb? Oh, you do that so much better than I do, I don't really know why I bother to come in. <laughs> now, uh, they want a secretary for the advertising manager at Drewson's. Who have we got who's good? Uh, Miss Renshaw. No, no, I was thinking of somebody a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, Dolly. Oh, I see. Well, uh, not too Dolly, of course. So, uh, what about Miss O'Connor? Oh, yes. But she's a chatterbox. Well, just right for an advertising manager, then. <laughs> oh, and uh, somebody at New College wants a thesis type. Somebody bright. I'll sort someone out, Mr. Lamb. Yeah, perhaps a young man for change. Oh, yes. That'd be a nice idea. How's your mother, Miss Bennett? Oh, much better. Thank you. Oh, that's what I like to hear. Oh, by the way, I've got uh, two tickets for the theatre next week. Now, I can't use them. I thought perhaps uh, you might take your mother, if she's well enough. Oh, Mr. Lamb, how kind. I shan't like to use them now. He took an interest in who worked where, who did what jobs. Well, that's what made us so successful. He talked to everyone. Secretaries. And cleaners. He wasn't a proud man. He'd chat to them endlessly. To tell you the truth, he was a bit of a gossip. But I mean that in a nice way. Oh, Mr. Humber, this is Chief uh, Policeman. Mr. Humber, General Manager. Uh, yes. Yes, Mr. Humber runs the place. Mr. Lamb always said he could never get along without him. How did you get along with Mr. Lamb? Oh, everyone got along with him. Uh, excuse me. Did you ever go to his flat? I have been. When was the last time? 
last night. Is that a fact? I wanted some papers. Last night? Yes. What time? Oh, quite early. He'd taken the draft accounts, and I wanted them urgently. Now, well, there we are, Hamlet. I think that's everything you want there. I've written my comments on the summary page of the accounts. Oh, thank you, sir. You never seem to smile, Humber. Do I work you too hard? Oh, well, it's been a long day, and I do have to work hard. You know that. <laughs> How lucky I am. But now I'll be getting along. I'll finish these this evening. Uh, hang on a minute, will uh, you? Uh, there's a note here for my wife. She's gone out. My son's out. Why not stay and have a meal with me? Keep me company. Uh, no, thank you. These are urgent. Good night, Mr. Lamb. And that was early, you say? About eight. I was only there a minute. And saw no one else? Oh, no, he was alone. Or outside? I didn't see anything. I just went and caught my bus. And he was alive and well when you left? Oh, alive and well. Excuse me, I have to... Uh... Did you kill him, Mr. Humber? Oh, no. I didn't. What reason would I have? Do you own a gun? No. Do you have access to a gun? No. Or to anyone that has? Oh, no. Well, I'll be off. You having so much urgent work to do? Good day, Miss Bennett. Uh, good day. Kinky. Revolting. There's not a dab anywhere, sir. Not a prince shouldn't be here. Only the dead man, the wife, the son. Oh, and the janitor. I'll go on looking. All right, sir. Gruesome for a kid. All kids are gruesome. Mr. Lloyd. Says he's remembered something, Chief. Well, I wish I hadn't mentioned it now. It can't mean anything. Try me. I heard a motorbike. When? Last night. Where were you? Down in my room. And the motorbike went by in the street? Oh, no, no. It was outside my window. I saw it. But you didn't think to tell us. Well, what time was this, Mr. Lloyd? Well, I know that because news at 10 had finished. I watched that. And then there was this row. You didn't get the number. Number? No, of course not. Did you get it, Abba? Yes, Chief. Good. Get what? Locks were not with James Cagney movies. Mm, the manufacturers wouldn't give it me over the phone. I had to send a uniform man round. What's the number? Uh, 121132. <laughs> he could have guessed it. Why? 121132. What? Letters of the alphabet. L A M B, his name. That's why you're a chief superintendent, and I never will be. <laughs> you know, alpha vanity, even among saints. Car lock book, insurance policies, will. I'm not here. What should expect all to his wife? Now, what's this? A number. 6072192. Another bank account somewhere? A London telephone somewhere. Try it. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry to trouble you, but I need some more papers. Oh, excuse me, I wonder. 
He didn't give me them all last night, and I can't something get else, on. Mr. Lloyd. Oh, well, it's this mail for the lambs. All right, give it to me. All right. All right, Miss Lloyd, off you go to your coffee party. <coughs> can I go up and look for them? There are no business papers up there, Mr. Humber. I'm sure if I went up... Electricity bill. I haven't paid that either. Should you be looking? Report me to the police. Come in. It's sealed. Yes, I had noticed. So if I can just... Not today, Mr. Humber. Yeah, but the accountants are screaming. So let them scream. Or talk to Mrs. Lamb. Thank you. Bullets are 9mm. Ballistics guess, and they stress guess. They came from a browning. No sign of it. Big search going on. Throws guns away. Too hard to come by. Any news on the motorbike? None of the beat constables or cars noticed one. Surely someone that time of night. Last night, smashed the bike on the bypass. Scared, I guess. A truck driver found him and brought him here. What's wrong with him? Legs, arms, back, skull, you name it, man. Are you drunk? No, we ran a blood test with a transfusion. What about the motorbike? Scrap metal. I got the number. Oh, we already checked that to let the relatives know. It's still registered in the name of the previous owner. He sold it a year ago and moved away. No one knows where. Call for you, Sergeant. Thanks. Did he have a gun on him? No. What about his clothes? Oh, we had to cut them off him. They were leather. Black leather. And the motorbike, what else? Even priests wear black leather these days. Including the underwear? We need a photograph of him without the bandages. Sergeant Beck will arrange it. The doctor won't like it. So don't tell him. As I expect to have locked, Chief. You're not going to believe this, but they've found the gun. Amy Hobson and Michael Singleton, Chief. I have the addresses. Where'd you find it? Go on. Was it some kind of a secret? I was under the bridge. You're a skin diver? No, no, I'm a milkman. So you meet there every day? Yeah. No. Every dinner time. No doubt you have your reasons. I tried on it. Well, it's quite dark there under the bridge, and I didn't know what it was, so I picked it up. I thought it was a toy. Yeah, I was too heavy for a toy. So you decided to tell the police after an argument? Well, Michael was married, you see. Shut up. Well, there won't be any dabs in it now, but you might as well go through the routine. We'll need your fingerprints. Already done, Chief. Yeah, and I don't like it. They'll be destroyed. This isn't Russia yet. Tell me about your secret meeting place. Hey, now, you watch it. Of course it's our secret meeting place. The bridge over, is it a road bridge? Yeah. It's a Hythe Bridge, Chief, here. Uh, could someone on a motorbike, say, going over that bridge, throw a gun, thinking it would go in the water? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. If they didn't stop to make sure. OK, well, thank you. You've been very helpful. And good luck. Oh. I'm telling was married. It is a Browning 9mm. Ballistics were right. Ballistics are always right. It's easy to be right when you're dealing with simple facts. Ballistics should try working with people sometimes. Now, the apartment here, the bridge here, and where the bike crashed, there. It's along the line, east to west, across the city. There's no number on that gun. Filed off years ago, from the look of it. So, imagine he was going home. Killed Lamb, drove off, threw the gun, crashed. He lives here, to the west of the city. There's not much over there. No, oh, cheer me up. There'll be photographs of him soon. Oh, they'll look like a waxwork. 
And Sergeant Beck is having his fingerprints checked at the yard, though he won't be known. An amateur? Okay. Professional wouldn't throw the gun away or crash the motorbike. Unless he was drunk. He wasn't. He was young. He was excited. He just killed a man. Oh, yeah, the other running copies now are still wet. <laughs> Looks like I feel the morning after. Well, get it around to everybody. Hotels, boarding houses, filling stations. I want him identified. Right. Anyone up in the apartment? No, not now. They're finished. And came up with damn all. Mm. Keys? Well, I'm not having another thought in my head. I shall revisit the scene of the crime. Sound like Sherlock Holmes. I don't play the fiddle. He, uh, he strikes me as a bit of a con. You know, the chief, he's one of the best. One of the best what, Sergeant? One of the best, sir. Is your business as urgent as all that, Mr. Humber? How did you get in? I found spare keys in his desk at the office. I told you, it, it's the accounts. I need the summary sheet urgently. I've been looking for it. You've been breaking and entering. Break? But how could I be? Mr. Lamb was my boss. And we can't have his death, however sad, upsetting the business. You didn't like him. I didn't kill him. No, I know that. You wouldn't have the guts. Well, let's go and look for your accounts together, shall we, Mr. Humber? Let's try the den. Did you try the safe? Well, of course I tried it. It's locked. So you thought that whatever you were looking for would be hidden among... Sir Walter Scott and Jane Austen. I don't know, do I? It's somewhere. What? What is it you're looking for, Mr. Humber? The summary page of the accounts with Mr. Lamb's comments. Are these what you're looking for, Mr. Humber? What are they? Don't you know? Why should I? I've never seen them before. Except that I can see their filth. They're all the special brand of cowboys and Indians, I'll grant you that. This one will fetch 20 pounds in the black market. And even saints have private lives. You think Mrs. Lamb knows he... that sort of thing? Wives always know. Husbands always think they don't. All right, Mr. Humber, you go back to your office for now and wait for me. You've got it, haven't you? You found it. It was in the safe? What was in the safe, Mr. Humber? Carlton Cinema turns out at 10.15 this week. <laughs> Oxford, city of culture and learning. Humber was up there snooping around. For what? Holy cow. <laughs> there are hundreds of them. Anything to do with it? No, I don't think people get murdered for liking dirty books, or for collecting butterflies, or for... What does the mother do? Have dinner with L.F.? Oh, yes, um, Louis Friedland, professor at Merton College. 
Mm, professor what? Scandinavian studies. Well, I figured that was her subject. Look, take this up to the safe. Stephen Lamb, couldn't I just give it to him? No. Even the dead get bills. It's a wicked world. Didn't you get me one? Well, I thought you'd... Oh, if you like. No, don't bother. About Humber snooping, what do you think you... Was... It's the motive. Uh... Something in the flat, someone killed for it, Humber was snooping for it. Perhaps some motorbike friend got it. Any idea what? A fair idea. A saintly Mr. Octavius Lamb. The whole thing stinks to high heaven of blackmail. Yes. And you got what blackmailers deserve. John Beck. Yeah. Thank you. It's our motorbike friend. He's conscious. All right, let's get there. You stay here and finish your lunch. It's not going to happen, is it? False alarm. Hell. He came round for a moment, delirious but speaking. It seemed right to call you, sir. It was right. Don't call me, sir. What did he say? He was talking about a woman. If it's his mother, I'll scream. Talking to a woman. He said she shouldn't be here. Go away, whoever you are. This is no place for a woman. A woman, do you think? No, no, nothing to tell us who she is. Afraid not. Well, it could have been something from years ago. He didn't know her, did he? Go away, whoever you are. Excuse me. Well, if it was last night, he was up in the flat looking for something. Saw a woman there, maybe kill Lamb. Or oh, she did. Him, Humber, the woman, all snooping. Don't leave him for a second. No, sir. Where are we going? The break, Humber. He's all we've got left. thinking he's still here. I have my pad and pencil. Where's Mr. Humber? Mr. Humber? I'll take you. Mr. Humber in his office? He's in the washroom, Miss Bennett. Oh, if you'll wait. Scuttled in there like a white rabbit ages ago. Mr. Humber? Mr. Humber? Ian? Hello, Foxtrot. This is Red Badge 3. A message for Chief Superintendent Jameson. Hang on, Foxtrot. I'll get him. Have to see him. Not again. Please, not nice again. Jump, uh, Chief. Ian, take this, will you? Right. He, he went out earlier. He said he had something to do. Yes, I know about that, Miss Bennett. <laughs> He asked me if I knew how to open the safe in Mr. Lamb's flat. And did you? <laughs> no! I've never been there. Can one of you Miss Bennett a cup of tea? <laughs> the Roman way of dying. The least painful way. Our motorbike friend has died. Didn't speak again, but we do know who he is. His landlady recognized his picture. Well, we'll go and see the landlady. You stay here. You drive in. The chief, my car. He's not that bad a driver. And won't in the future. Here, just a minute. What do you think you're doing? You look so scared, Constable. He's somewhere else. Yes. 
Yes, what? Uh, yes, sir. Does she know what he does for a living? Yes, Chief Superintendent. He was an assistant manager in a bank. Well, that's respectable. Blue suit, grey suit, Harris Tweed. And... More casual gear. Empty. Cricket bag, golf club. I don't know. Money? No, sir. He likes having his photograph taken. Cool. You ever see anything like this before, Constable? No, sir. It's square to be ordinary these days. We'd better take these with us. The landlady would have a heart attack. They had to be processed somewhere. Any chance of finding out where? Uh, oh, no, I doubt it. Can't identify the others, can we? This is my house, and I've got a right to know what's going on. Do you recognize on. that man, Mrs. Butte? Why, it's Mr. Lamb. Come here. What do you want? Can I go upstairs? Mother wants some things. What things? A change of clothes and her nightdress. Yeah, OK. Nordic House? Uh, yes, I want to speak to Detective Inspector Jessel, please. Yeah, I'll help. Well, go on, off you go. Have you found who did it yet? Oh, there's some mail. Oh, for me? Give it to your mother. Send your bill. I'll leave it upstairs. Hello, Peter. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Are you expecting a butterfly? Yes. An Aperture Iris, the purple emperor. How do you know? I'll put it in the safe upstairs. Thanks a lot. Peter, yes. Yeah, listen, I'm down in Oxford playing a hunch. Our no, number. Uh, 607 2192. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not a telephone number. We tried it. Yeah? Yes, it could be. Would you? Okay, thanks, Peter. Listen, C1 know where I am. Yep, thanks a lot. Bye bye. Boy said everything seemed to be there, and he was by the safe. And I said, can't you look inside? And he said, only his dad knew how to open it. Hesitate, Chief. He just whipped the safe straight open. Had to be the boy or the mother. Chief. He's too controlled. He never drops a hairpin like my old mother used to say. Chief, this is Bill Inspector Havelock with us. Yes, I'm back. Just a minute. Inspector Jessel. Huh. Uh, Peter? Yep. Yeah. Are you sure? <sighs> Not sure, but half sure. That sounds like the fraud squad. <laughs> no, thanks a lot, Peter. Yeah. Bye. Right. 6072192. Number in the safe. It's probably the number of a bank account. Oh, great. All we do is find a bank them. account in Switzerland. Oh. I don't know any Swiss police. You know they needed any. I might know somebody who does. Yeah, if I ring, um. You do it. You find out who that bank account belongs to, where it is, and I'll buy you a cheap dinner. 
reminds me I'm hungry. Oh, Chief. Lavender, New Zip. Agent, tobacconist, account for the month. Six pounds twenty-five, so? Well, the address. It's in Great Two. It's a village about all twelve miles from here. Now, who buys their newspapers from a shop twelve miles away? You are a clever boy. Finished yet, Chief? Yeah, just about. Okay. Let's make an entrance. Driving like that. You're right, Mrs. Lavender. Oh, post office is shut. I'm sorry, but the law's the law. I'm the law. What do you want, then? Information. It's a terrible photo. Is this? What? Oh, no, that's ever so good. Look, Mr. Lavender, it's Mr. Battersby. That's right, Mr. Battersby. Mr. Battersby buys his newspapers here? Magazines and cigars sometimes. Once a week, regular as clockwork. I think he's a travelling man. If he wasn't a travelling man, he'd have a home of his own now, wouldn't he? Wouldn't need us for his letters. <laughs> this man has his letters addressed here? They're what he calls for really. How many? Oh, about the same every week, 20 or so. All through the mail, no one ever calls personally? No, never. Never called themselves. There's a letter for him now. It came this morning. I want it. Oh, no. Our service is confidential. Quite confidential. We never betray a trust. I'll betray your bloody post office license, now get it. How long has he been coming here, this Mr. Battersby? Years and years. One of our most regular customers. He gets 20 letters every week? Give or take a few. Here. Yeah. You can't do that. It's wicked. It's against the law. It's criminal. It's, it's scandalous. It's... Money. Mrs. Lavender. B, E, R, yeah. yep. Yes. Uh-huh. You're beautiful. Oh, sorry, sir. Right. Rough? No, pretty rough. If we ever reveal the information, we'll be shot, and if the Swiss find out how, they, how we got it, they'll declare war. So tell me. Well, the bank is the bank Huber. The address is Zurich. The account is in the name of Agneau, Monsieur Agneau. That's French for lamb. Any chance of finding out how much is in the account? No way, even the Pope couldn't find out. No. Well, here's some more for it. All grubby and untraceable. Definitely blackmail. Twenty or more people regularly every week. And one of them killed him. Yeah, it happens. Look, this isn't a regular stamp, it's Frank. Get on. No, you get on to the post office. Yes, come in. What do you want? I asked him to check the crime books for last night. Oh? Huh? Well, people getting killed, motorbikes Hello? crashing, guns thrown off bridges. Have luck, see ID here. So what else? Uh, we've Someone had a broke into the television store and got away with four colour sets. With dress on it. Drunk and disorderly outside Frank the dog and duck. Yes. Someone uh, broke into a school and a woman complained a man attacked her but ran away yes. before anything happened. Probably got a good look at her. <laughs> yes. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, this envelope belongs to a firm called Harness and Barden Lawyers. Well, right, we'll go there. Which school? I beg pardon, sir? Which school was broken into last night? Well, nothing seemed to be missing, sir. It was a uh, Radcliffe Road grammar. Over here after college to continue my studies. What was your subject? 
And Stephen, how old is Stephen? Nearly 16, sir. Where do you go to school? Radcliffe Road Grammar, sir. As far as you know. You go to that school. You stay here. Take care of this. We don't want too many big feet clumping onto a lawyer's office. You might sue us. Thank you very much. What the hell do you think you're Police, doing? Police, Mr. Barton. You have confirmation. Your secretary is a better typist than you are. Do you realize anything concerning my clients? You're a lawyer, not a priest. Concerns you, Mr. Barton. You type this envelope, put 50 pounds in it and mailed it. The same as you've been doing every week or every month. He was blackmailing you. Lamb. Battersby. For how long? I don't have to say anything which might incriminate me. No, no, get him down to the station. Lamb's dead. Battersby, as you know him, he's Sergeant. dead. You weren't the only one. There were dozens of you. One of you killed him last night. We don't right, even think enough. it was you, but help yourself. Is that true? Battersby's dead. You're off his hook. Now get off ours. Help you with your inquiries. That's all right. How long has he been blackmailing you? Six years. How much? You know. Fifty pounds a month. Six years, that's... Three thousand six hundred. What did you do that's worth so much? I had an affair. With a woman? Of course it was with a woman. What the hell do you think? How did you find out Battersby Lamb? I don't know. He wrote. Sent me copies of letters I'd written to Mary and... Oh, it was six years ago. It hasn't happened since. I never see her. You didn't want your wife to find out. I'm not married. Her husband. Was he big? Would he have duffed you up? That wouldn't worry me. What did? What does? Who is this Mary you had an affair with six years ago? She's married to my brother. Did you kill Octavius Lamb? No. But whoever did... Well, go on. They've got themselves a free lawyer. Barden, Humber, the manager. What's his name on the motorbike? All pain, all unknown to each other. And the woman who lives upstairs, whatever her name is. Suddenly they all know who Lamb is and where he lives. How? Good evening, Superintendent. My name's Mary Barden. I heard it on the radio. Some evenings my husband gets home late. If the traffic's bad, the local radio tells you. So I listen at tea time. They said that Mr. Lamb of Oakhurst Court was dead. So I thought I'd better come. How long had you known him by that name? His real name? Since yesterday. And you came to his apartment last night? Yes. Had you met him before? Until yesterday, I had no idea who he was or where he lived. How did you suddenly discover that he lived here? This arrived yesterday. Dear Mrs. Barton, this is to help you. The man who troubles you so much is Octavius Lamb and lives at 6 Oakhurst Court, Oxford. Burn this letter, don't reveal it. A well-wisher. What did you think of it? I thought it was his weird way of saying he wanted to meet me at last. So you came here? Yes. Yeah. What time? I left it till late. I didn't particularly want to be seen. About ten. I rang the bell. Mr. Lamb? Yes? The man who blackmails me? What is this? I thought you'd ask me in.
Who is she? Is she in this with you? I have no idea who either of you are. Well, get her out of here. Get rid of her. You shouldn't be here. Go away, whoever you are. This is no place for a woman. What do you want? I had a letter. The same as his, from a well-wisher. Look, I want those photographs, and I want them now. Oh. And, um, what do you want? Don't you know? You know, you should be poised like her. Photographs, you... No, I think not. Uh, a letter. Did you send this? Well, of course I didn't. Some idiot's playing a practical joke. <laughs> Do I look like a blackmailer? Yes, and I'm here to get my photographs. I don't give a damn what you're here to get. Save you can both get out now. I've had enough of you, Mr. Battersby. Over the years, I've had more than enough of you. You haven't had anything of me. I have never seen you in my life before. I have never seen either of you, never heard of you. For heaven's sake, put that pop gun away. Look, it says here that you're the man that's been blackmailing me for six years. He is, and me for four years. Blackmail? I'm a businessman. <laughs> Some business. Look, if it was a joke, who'd want to play it? Who can possibly know about me? About either of us? <laughs> I've no idea. Go on. I stopped being poised. He started to phone for the police. Stop that. Put it down! My home invaded by a pair of raving lunatics. I'm warning you, Battersby. Don't make me do it. You shot him? Blackland? Cassin? No. There was a fight. Well, a scuffle. I heard furniture going over. But he was alive and well when you both left. Yes. And if I say it's a pack of lies that one of you killed him? Look, would I have come here? Listen, the whole thing's a bore. The blackmail's a bore. It's all because I didn't want my husband to find out. And I don't even care. I was stupid. The adultery? Paying him in the first place. Have you ever employed anyone from Lamb's Services? Lamb's Services? Lamb's? Yes. Years ago, I got a cleaner from them when my own was sick. Is that how you discovered? Did you ever see Casson again? Well, not really. I saw a motorbike tearing off. I assumed that was him. I felt weak, but I had to move. There was this person watching. A person? Out there in the darkness. Scared me. Funny after what had happened. Did you recognize this person? I didn't look. Do I have your address, Mrs. Barton? I have it, Chief. Well, you might as well go home. Sir Friedland, Louis Friedland. Yes. Uh, we're police officers, sir. We'd like to have a word with you about Mrs. Madeline Lamb. Maddie? What about her? Do you think we might come in, sir? Please be seated, gentlemen. Well, it's about uh, Maggie, you say. She dined with you last night, Professor Freeland. That's right, uh huh? What time did she leave? Oh, <laughs> uh, we talked about old times. I showed her an essay I have in the Havermore. We had some dinner. We She left about 10. Hell, no more like 11.30. Did she ask you to say that? What? Oh, you're both American. Roughly the same age. <laughs> We've known each other a long time. We're in the same class in school. In America? Uh-huh. You were friends. Well, we dated. We were doing the same studies after college she came to Europe. 
and married. Look, I got this appointment a year ago. We've exchanged Christmas cards over the years, that's all. Until you met here. Are you in love with Mrs. Lamb? She's a married woman. Are you in love with her? Yes. And she with you? She was going to ask her husband for a divorce. I can imagine that. Mrs. Lamb, please. She didn't want to see anyone. She's upset after what happened. It's you or your son, Mrs. Lamb. We know that. Me. Are you absolutely certain about that? Mrs. Madeline Lamb, I have to charge you with the murder of your husband, Octavius Lamb, at number six Oakhurst Court in Oxford and whatever you What the hell is this? I must warn you that you needn't say anything. But if you do, we're taken down and may be used in evidence. Maddie, don't you worry about it. Think this is all nonsense. I'm calling my... No, Lewis. He knows nothing. He lied to me. Well, for my sake, he has no re idea why. He wouldn't divorce me, Lewis. He wouldn't let me divorce him. I didn't even ask. So you killed him? But that wasn't why. Did you know about his business? The agency? Of course no, I knew. his other business. What other business? Your son knew. Stephen knew? He went alone to the cinema last night. It got out at 10.15. You said you both got back at 11.30. <sighs> it was nearer 10 o'clock. Stephen got home first, and he didn't go to the movies. He told me later there'd been two people at the apartment, a man and a woman. They were there because he wrote to them. Well, he didn't tell me that. He waited outside until they left, and then he went in. You've been snooping. You're those people were... going to kill me. You don't know how weak people are. But not me. I'm not weak. Ow! And your mother, I suppose you told her. No, Father, please, it's for her. What does that mean? What does that mean? She wants to go away. Tell me! Professor Friedland, they want to... Get in there! Little boys must learn to mind their own business. Little boys must not meddle in other people's affairs. Archie! Our little treasure's been up to his tricks again, my dear. Our little... No, please, Mom! Please, Archie! Archie, stop it! Ow. Stop it at once! Ow. Do you hear me? Leave the boy alone! Oh, don't you Mom worry. Tavis. It's your turn next. Ow. What's mine? Mine! Mine to do as I please with! Understand it! Once and for all!
Steve. Go downstairs, Mother. We can. Down the stairs and wait for me. Try not to let anyone see you. I didn't mean to kill you. Mother, I must empty the safe. Steve. <laughs> Things the police mustn't find, Mother. Go, Mother. I'll only be a little while and then I'll be all right. They killed him. The people who were here. I waited down by the back door. And when he came back? We went in the front way, up to the apartment. You know the rest. I'll talk to the boy. Is that necessary? Of course it is. I've charged you, Mrs. Lamb. It's a custody charge, I'm afraid. You'll have to come to the police station. From Detective Chief Superintendent Jameson, C1 New Scotland Yard. Today's, tonight's date. Uh, copies to the Chief Constable, the Coroner, the Director of Public Prosecutions. Paragraph one. Octavius Lamb was shot dead.